Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Sunday service with the Center for Creative Living. CCL, a charter of the Universal Church of the Master, has served and supported the spiritual needs of its community here in the Bay Area for over 20 years. Good morning, good morning. Okay. They'll, they'll listen to me shortly, I think. Oh, is my mic on? Good morning, good morning. Yes, it is. Oh, so glad to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And, uh, well, thank you. I, I received that. Uh, uh, thank you so much. We have two of our UCM members are in the hospital uh, today. Uh, one is Smitty. Uh, um, and uh, Keith is in uh, Veterans Hospital in Palo Alto, oh. and the other is Magic Marge Powers. His oh, partner is partner. in uh, uh, the hospital at Good Sam. Oh. So um, they're both uh, there for completely different reasons. Uh, Smitty should be getting out on Tuesday, and Magic says if they don't let her out, she's going to break down the hospital. <laughs> I just talked to both of them, and they, they, they've got completely different energies about being in the hospital. So I'd like you all to just take a nice deep breath and oh, let it out slowly. Let's do that one more time. Take a nice deep breath. Oh, and visualize these two wonderful people and know that we're getting older which might surprise some of you. And both uh, our wonderful Smitty and Marge are over 85, and they're feeling their age, and yet they want to get well, and they want to get out, and they want to live their life. So we say, dear Creator, feel their energy, feel their life, and fill their bodies with love and healing energy and know that these two beautiful people are ready to be back and home and doing the healing work that they do. And so it is. Yes, and so uh, for those of you, I, I, I wonderful Ophelia, this is her first time. Welcome. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And for all of you who are coming here because you're ready to get some up, up, up well, upbeat, upbeat energy, uh, just upbeat. Have you realized the energy's been kind of low lately? No. Have any of you felt that, where you kind of oh, feel like you're happy. slugging through life? Yeah, yeah. Okay. so today we're gonna do some upbeat. And, oh, uh, <laughs> wait a minute, and our wa wonder, wonderful Corky is gonna teach us and talk to us about letting go of those negative entities that they you don't even realize when you've picked up some negative guck. And she's going to tell you how to get rid of it, I think. I don't know. She's done this talk three times so far, and it's never been the same. So I'm excited to find well, out what the fourth is going to be. That I, that I've been doing it, but it's always kind of been that way. And she does a, a thing about earthbound entity releasement technique. So we want you to know that every one of you has gone through something, probably, where you felt, woke up and not felt like yourself. So Corky's going to talk to you about that. Let's. Uh, we already introduced Ophelia, whether she wanted to be introduced or not. We did. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And we also talked about our wonderful Reverend Janet riding on a motorcycle yesterday, which Yay! I think is so fun Aww. because she was in a, a memorial for the VTA people who have passed. And so we want to really send our blessings to them too. That's Please, the, let's do. Yeah, that's because really important. Because the second important. anniversary is, is sometimes harder than the first. Yeah. Because the full reality has finally settled in. Well, it's already two years. It's yeah. already yeah. two years. Oh uh, we made it a joyful ride. And mm -hmm. you would have been proud. I called all of you in and we did a thing. We are the hope, we are the healing, we are the unity, we are the peace. And Yay! So we did that, and, and, and then we, had, you know, so they're just amazing, amazing people, and there was an energy. Some, many of the families came, which was so wonderful. Most of them rode, but a couple of them actually rode on 
motorcycles and it was so beautiful to see their faces light up as we held the good and so what i said is let's invoke our ancestors right you know let's them let them know we love them we know they love us it sounds wonderful that is great somebody just walked by us i don't know what that's about where they're going you know where to go and where'd they go <laughs> gone <laughs> Uh, welcome. Good morning. Hi, come on in. <laughs> and um, one of the things that I want to ask is who's had a birthday this week? Anybody this week, birthday, <laughs> next week, birthday? Next week. Yay! Yay! Do you want to wait to, to get your beads next week or do you want to get them today? I don't know. Do we have any purples in there? I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> Yeah, you Let's get see. One this week and I think that oh would be gosh. a great idea, but look at what, what we have. New beads. Oh. What and they're guess where they're from? New Orleans? New Orleans. Oh my yeah. gosh, this yeah. is wonderful energy. Yeah, we've got all this energy in there really great. And so you want purple? Ooh. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Got it? Then you get another one next week. How's that? Yay! Okay, are you ready? This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Yay! <laughs> and uh, so, do you have any great plans for your birthday? Not yet. I'm meditating on it. Okay. Next Sunday. Yeah. You'll probably be gone. No, I might be here. Well, we'll not. Well, hey, it, well, keep us in suspense. Yeah, right. Is Janet going to be there? Is she not? Is, 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 is uh, Tim going to do the music? Is uh, what's going to happen? <laughs> what's going to happen? Okay. Uh, why don't you come on up and we'll do a meditation. I'd like you all to put your feet flat on the floor. And release all the negativity that you can feel from your body, from your mind, and from your spirit. Just let go of things that have been bothering you this past week. And know that you are a child of the Creator. And being a child of the Creator means that you understand that we are all one. The Mother, Father, God doesn't take favorites, doesn't pick negative energies. The Creator sees us all as warm, loving human beings. So right now, what I'd like you to do is just cross your arms across your chest and give yourself a hug. And while you're doing this, picture the energy of the Creator as it comes down over your body. And just picture that energy and hold it there. Just hold it for a minute and know you deserve this hug. This hug that says you are special, you are precious. And all day today, if there things happen where you run into negativity, if you run into people in despair, or you happen to have negative energies float through your head, just visualize this hug. It's okay to hug yourself. It's okay to bring God into the picture and give yourself a big hug. And now we're going to listen to the wonderful Reverend Dr. Janet Childs as she puts all I've said to music. Just keep your eyes closed. And if you want to keep hugging yourself as you listen to the Reverend Janet. Oh, we are surrounded by the sweetest love, <clears throat> the sweetest love. Oh, we are held in the arms of the purest love, the purest love, let it shine. Ooh, let it 
shine, let it shine, let it shine. <clears throat>
giving love, not just receiving love, but actually being love all day to day. Be love. Thank you very much, Janet. That was beautiful. Thank you. Well, today's talk is going to be very interesting. If you haven't heard about earthbound entities, uh, and you don't realize that sometimes that may be what's going on, you're, you're going to receive a lot of information. And as Corky says, Reverend Corky Whitaker not only teaches this, but it's her program that she came up with because she met people who were possessed, for want of a better word. They were carrying negative energy, and quite often it wasn't theirs. And so she came up with the Ebert, Earthbound Entity Releasement Technique, and has been teaching it now since 1990. Wow. And besides teaching it, she's also trained other people. Now, for those of you who don't know, Corky is a certified hypnotherapist. Uh, she's written programs about Ebert. She's had clients from all over the country, and, uh, and also a little bit modest about it, yeah. that what she does, the work she does. But she creates miracles. When she finds uh, that somebody has a negative entity and releases it, it's one of the most amazing things. We were in the mansion, many of you knew the, us in the James Lake mansion, and she had taught this in a class. And she had one woman who was sitting there and she said, okay, now we're gonna release this. She put her in a slight trance and said, be gone. And the woman just slid off the chair. <laughs> she said, I've never felt so completely me as wow. when you let go of this entity. So I've seen it work. We, I was with her when she did it on the uh, Queen Mary. We walked into the Queen Mary and the gentleman who met us said, please don't take the ghosts away. They're good for our public image. <laughs> <laughs> so she had to be very careful. That she my hands in my pocket. Kept <laughs> <laughs> her hands in her pocket, yeah, so she didn't release them. Uh, but uh, I, I was in Illinois when she did a conference and people that were uh, spiritualist beings that were there coming up and asking her, tell me more about what this is. So if you haven't heard about it, you're going to be kind of enthralled as I am. Please welcome Reverend Corky Whitaker. Thank you. Yay! Yay! Oh, I'm, I'm going to stay right here, okay? All right. Hi. Ev Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. So now that I've got my stole on, I'm Reverend Corky. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm a... You, you did the first two paragraphs. <laughs> That's what happened when you asked me to type it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Ebert um, is Earthbound Entity Releasement Technique. And the now what are Earthbound Entities? They are people who have died and have chosen uh, yeah, not to go to the light, that they stay Earthbound. Now, why would anybody want to do that? There's a myriad of reasons. You know, they don't know they're dead. They have anger issues. They're addicted to alcohol, drugs, sex, rock and roll, whatever, and they don't want to. They don't want to leave that. They've been told that they're going to go to hell because they, you know, they have done things that are bad, and so they, you know, been programmed that way. And so when they die, it's like, oh God, I, you know, I better stay here. I know I'm not in hell here. <laughs> and well, <laughs> right? And um, so for, in fear. And are their family invites them to if please begs them and I have one guy begged her mother to stay with her. And her mother stayed was happy to do that until the gal got a boyfriend and then she really wanted her mother to go away. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when she asked me, Can you make my mother go away? Yeah. Said, well, we'll see what we can yeah, so, yeah, got rid of her. And then it was uh, and it's our purpose on light on the earth is to Okay, so we're born, and we come in to have experiences, to be love. You know, Moss, Dottie's spirit guide says we're here to do two things, to, to be unconditionally loving 
and to be in our joy. Whew, that's quite a basket full of things to, to carry around with you. But you can do it. You can do it. Um, and, and joy is really a, a, a primary part of staying protected from things that go bump in the night because they, your aura, your auric field is like your, is your protection. And it's just like when you're, if you're ill and you take antibodies and you build up your immune, immune system and even if you sit next to somebody who's sick, chances are if you've been resting and eating right and doing all this stuff and have all your antibodies and every, everything's all up to snuff, that you're not going to get the cold or whatever, right? And so your aura is very much like that. If you keep it strong and if you keep yourself fluffed up and if you keep yourself in, in a state of joy, that is going to build, uh, build up your immunity system, your the vibration, to a point where things that are of lower vibration can't penetrate your into your system. So you figure that you have something like an earthbound entity that is vibrating at like uh, maybe 200 cycles per second, and, and here you are, you know, and you're, you're like a thousand cycles per second, and so it's just like us trying to walk through a wall. You know, it's you're vibrating so fast that nothing can penetrate it. But if you get sad, more than just sad, you know, like depressed, drunk, drugs, uh, just you go, you, you can feel yourself when you start going down that, that depression. Don't you feel heavy? Yeah. You know, all of your, you're not as light, you're not as enlightened. And so you, you just start kind of, you know, you're, you're dropping your aura. And as if when you get down to that same, it's like water, you know, that all the, entities that are around you that are cycling at 200 cycles per second, they're just kind of like going to drift in. Whew. And there's wow. dead people all around us all the time. They're here. They're here right now. So keep your aura up. <laughs> so um, that's what I do is, you know, when you say, you know, I really want to do this. Okay, uh, let me tell you a story. So this gal had come in, and she had graduated from the university uh, with a degree in finance, and she wanted to become a, a financial advisor and all this kind of stuff. And but she couldn't find. She would buy books and she uh, subscribe to magazines and all this stuff, and you know all of her stuff that she brought home that she had from school. She couldn't find it. I mean, she was only in like a one-bedroom apartment, and she couldn't find it anywhere. She'd bring home a new book, turn around, and it was gone. What happened? Okay, so it's, but she really wanted to do this, so she said, well, "I don't know." And she got in my energy. It, now this is a this is the first thing that happens when you get when you have an earthbound entity is that they start sapping your energy, even if they're dormant, just laying there dormant. They still attach your in, to your energy, and so that's if you're tired all the time, this is something to consider, mm -hmm. you know, among other things which we will talk about. Okay, so. She, she's like, I just, I don't know what's going on. Everything's lost. I just can't seem to remember. I, things are, help me. Okay, so, set her down, and I have a little process that, uh, you know, to invite whatever it is in there that's preventing her from, from having, you know, my, my whole thing is that you succeed at whatever it is that you want to do. And so whatever this is that's preventing her from doing that thing, from being successful, for it to, you know, and if it had a name, what would the name be? And this old, feeble voice came out and said, Jonathan Smith, oh, in an English accent. And I said, Jonathan, Mr. Jonathan Smith. He says, yes, I'm here. So, okay, what, tell me the last thing you remember. And he says, I was in London and it was cold. It was cold, I had my coat up around my neck and I had my and I had my scarf on in my head, and my threadbare jacket to coat, and I was going to work, and I was trudging, trudging, in the snow toward the bank. And I was so tired, and I was so hungry, and I was so exhausted, and my hat blew off my head, and I turned to see where my hat was, and I tripped, and I fell in a snowbank. And I just couldn't get up. And I died. And I was doing it, I was sick, and I was going to that bank. For 50 years I had worked for that bank. And 
<laughs> Excuse me. He's a poor guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and so he uh, uh, said, I gave them my life. I mean, I had a family, but I was never there. I was always at the bank. Right. You know, and whatever they wanted me to do, I did. And, and I didn't have any money, and I couldn't afford a new coat. And, and actually, I was kind of happy to be dead and, and out, of, out of that. And, but for, so I don't even know how long I was, I was laying there in that snowbank. You know, for like decades, or maybe for a hundred years, he was laying there. But so, our, so back to modern time. So Cindy, she goes to, as she she graduates from university, she goes over to London to to kind of have a vacation before she starts a new career, and says, uh, you know, she's been in the pub and she's it's it's evening, it's nighttime, and she's on her way back to her hotel, and she's kind of not sitting on her feet. She trips. Maybe it was the same thing, you know, cobblestone that she that he had tripped over. Who knows? And bumps her head, and he's and she's laying right next to him. And he says, and she, she reminded me of my daughter. Oh. And so I, I put my hand, you know, I kind of crawled over there and I, I put my hand on her shoulder just to see if I could help. And the next thing I know, I was inside. I was there in her aura. And it felt so good. It was warm. It felt loving. And I didn't want to leave. No reason to leave. So she kind of, you know, woke up and got up and said, okay, and went back to her room, lay down for, you know, because she sh sh shaking herself up and she was still a little intoxicated, you know, and slept, and then she had other things that she wanted to do. She got up and said, mm, I still feel tired and old and feeble a little and maybe a little depressed, but that's just probably because I've been drinking. And so she, she, she goes on and she, you know, does the rest of her trip. She goes home and she starts accumulating her tools for her new, for her new job. And then that's when she noticed that everything that she had kept disappearing. And so I said, okay, now, Jonathan, what is your part in this? And he said, I don't want to make the same mistakes I've made yeah. with just being consumed by the financial machine. And so I, I want her to do something that would make her happy. And this isn't going to make her happy. Never made me happy. How could it make her happy? And so. So we talked to him about how things had changed, hopefully, <laughs> and how that this is what she really wanted to do. She had trained for this, and this is what she wanted to do. This was her, this was her life work and her life hope to be able to, to help people, you know, in, in the financial world. And and um, finally, we talked him into talked him into going actually, and that she was going to be okay and that she could do it herself. And thanked him so much for his concern for her. And so, what would you do is, you know, because there's the light, God's light, and so, and it's, it's always around, and so I, I, I see it as kind of like a tornado off in the distance, unless it's right through with us. And so I say, John, have you seen the light? He goes, yes, it's over there. And I said, well, let's bring it over here to you, to us. Mm -hmm. And I want you to put your hand, put your hand in the light. And he goes, oh, that feels great. His, his voice is getting stronger. And his, you know, and, and his arm is starting to look more youthful. Well, the light's good stuff. I said, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and walk into the light. And so he walked into the light, and he said, oh, thank you, and whoosh, and away he goes. Now that's the that's the culmination. That's what happens when when you. That's the way you send them out. Is they go into the light. It's a, it's so peaceful and it's so it's so it's a wonderful process, and it. They're happy when they go. So that's one. See now what? And okay. So why would anybody want to stay earthbound? It isn't necessarily that people want to be like with Jonathan. He didn't want to be, but he didn't know what else to do. Right. He didn't have any of the the structure. You know, say we talk about afterlife. We talk about reincarnation here. So you guys know that when <coughs> when you or or a family member are dying, that it's really important to make sure that. That they that they go to the light, and so, um, but a lot there are other people that don't know that. So it, it's uh, um, th that's what the, the, the training. I'm going to be doing a class next uh, Saturday, 
uh, over at the uh, UCM from 10 to 3 and all of the student, I, you know, so what I'd like you to do today is to write on the card, you know, the uh, uh, registration card, if, you, if you're going to come, you know, and I'm, I want to keep it kind of small, like only about 20 people, so I can work on everybody, so we can learn how to work on people and how, learn how to do this. Anyway, so um, I've got tons of stories because I've been doing this for, for a long time, and and it's always, there's only one time when I talked to a guy and, and he was saying, you know, I have this problem where, now he was a, a, um, a programmer, software programmer, and he said, um, but I end up playing games on the computer. He said, I've lost relationships, I've lost jobs, I've lost, uh, you know, some, I've lost friends because I can't stop playing com games on the computer. And so I want to find out what that's about. Well, it turns out that when he was, when he was very young, he was a sickly dude. And so he'd been in and out of the hospital many, many times as a, you know, like when he was in his early, uh, like six, seven, eight, that, that kind of age range. And what, what happened was that he had picked up a couple of, of young boys and they were, they were like 10, 11, and 12. That's only, that's three, only two of them were there. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> one was 10 and one was 11 or 12. How's that? <laughs> anyway, so he had these, these two guys that, that were in his, in his head. And all, and all of his life, he had had them there saying, oh, this is boring. Let's go do something else. Let's do something else. Let's go play. Wow. Let's go play. Let's go. And he had embraced that, and that had been his, you know, when things got too rough, it was like he had these buddies that he could go off and play games and, and be, you know, have his mind someplace else. And so at the end of this, when, when I said, okay, are you ready to let them go? And he said, no. I don't know who I'll be without them. Wow. And he says, and so I'm, I am not ready. It's okay, it's your choice. It's a free will plan. Yeah. And so he walked out with his buddies. <laughs> well, then I had this other woman. She wanted to marry hers. Her, her, her. It's like, you know, that's not healthy. <laughs> but um, you know, we had, a, that was the long, several sessions with her. So I don't, I don't know. Anyway, but there's all kinds of things and, and all sorts of people. And... Like the the one that Dottie was talking about with the when we were over on the on the Queen Mary Queen Mary, and so I you know did my talk and I said so is anybody does anybody have any of these symptoms and this gal rose her rose her hand she raised her hand and said yes what I every time I get a massage I speak Spanish <laughs> I said oh is that, con is that she goes I don't know how to speak Spanish <laughs> <laughs> so I think that. that Yes, come up here. Let's talk about this. Yeah, let's talk about this. And so, you know, I, I, uh, she's she's sitting there. I say, you know, go into it. And I say, the part of this that that, that speaks Spanish, if that it, it had a name, what would the name be? And then she stood up and she said, uh, what "Was it Alfredo?" Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So tell me about tell me about yourself. And he says, "I am the best of the land in the ranchera, I, ranchero, ranchero. I I break all of the horses." And I am the best in all of California. And I, that's wonderful. So tell me more. He says, well, one day I was, I had a horse in the ring who was really feisty. And the ho horse threw me and I died. Okay, tell me more. He says, and my wife and my children were watching. And I didn't know what to do. I was so embarrassed. I, I what could I do? So I never left because I had to re redeem myself. And I would get, get on every horse that came into the ring, and I'd be there. And I so this gal had gone to, you know, she was in in the area, you know, L.A., and um, had gone to this ranch and had been riding horse. I don't know how her aura got. Maybe she probably got startled or something, and her aura dropped. And he's sitting there on the, the horse with her, and in he goes, he goes, oh, I'm riding. Now the, the cool thing, or bad thing, is that. <laughs> The, the, as they're a, when they're um, just a spirit, they, they have no, you know, they can't grab things, they can't, you know, it's like if you have an alcoholic, they can't get the booze until they get into a body. And then they can make a person 
get it. And that, but yeah. they'll never be satisfied because they don't have a body to be in, intoxicated. So they, you know, it's like they, they don't want to drink, they want to get drunk. They don't want sex, they want, oh, they don't want love, they want sex. I mean, they want to, they want the, <clears throat> of it, of whatever it is they're Orgy. addicted to. Orgy? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> then you might need more than one, but. <laughs> well, I had one gal who, who had this, this young guy that was um, in her body, and he he was a sex addict, and he didn't like her having sex with men. So she became, she started going with women because her inside part was saying, I want to have sex with a woman. I don't want to have sex with a man. So that was kind of an interesting. Anyway, so um, back to the guy on the horse. So <laughs> she said, I. I am the strongest, I'm the best, here I'll show you. And he, she started to, to open up her shirt, she, you know, to show her muscles, I said, no, 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 that's okay. <laughs> I can see, I can, I can see in here, I, 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 you are the, the strongest. So, uh, and I said, okay, now, here, but you are in this, this woman's body and you need to be, and you need to go to the light, you need to be with your family. So what I did with him was I said, now your family is here, They're, they've been waiting for you. And so, what? And you know, here's the light. Here's your family, and you love your family, and you need to go with them. And so he was like, yes, yes. You know, he would. He'd rather be with his family than with with this other woman that he didn't really know. And so he departed himself from her. And said, Goodbye, and off to the light they all went. So that's it's. It, yeah, I make it sound pretty easy, but it's and it is. You know. Uh, if you, when you get the story and you find out, the deal is to get a hook. You know, it's like, what is it that you want? Well, you can't get it here. You know, they say, well, but you know, this person has been giving me all this booze and everything all this time. Yes, but now they know you're here. Now they're going to be be on 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 their toes about it. And if and if there's something telling them to to get a drink that when they don't want to, they won't do it because now they know it's you and not them. So the deal is, you're busted. The only way you're going to get anymore is to go to the light. And so you, know, you get that, you say, see, there's all those people over there drinking in that Trevina over there, that's where you need to go. And they go, okay, they'll go, and away they go. And then, of course, when you get to the other side, then you have other needs, and, you know, but that's, you know, I, I trust God will give them what they, what they need. So, okay, uh, so why would anybody stay? You know, if you're in, if you're in battle and you and you and you love the fight, you know, regardless of so and, and you get killed, well you'll just pick up, go to whoever's standing near you, and whether it's for the you know because people who really love battle they don't care which side they're, they're battling on as long as they can fight. So it's I mean when you go to when you travel. There's spirits are on thi- you know, are are stuck on on um, you know like the Colosseum. There's a lot of pain that's you know, in there at that Colosseum, and so I'm sure that there's a, a lot of people that that didn't go on. And um, in in my group, I guess I might as well open my notes here. <laughs> How far did I get? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So um, I, I just I just want to let you know that um, okay. So there's there's four things that we do in Ebert: detect, detach, release, and stay clear. That's what you learn is to how how do you detect them? What are the red flags? Where are the red flags? How do you what do you do when you find red flags? You know, if somebody's in a car accident, maybe they just left the bar and they and they they drive and and, and they get in a car accident. Where's it, where are they going to go? Back to the bar, and who's who's going to be where they can get it? I mean, people are there drunk, their their aura's down, you know. So it's just they go in. Uh, it's a it's it's just a it, it can be a mess, but it doesn't have to be. And the more people that we teach um, what what the possibilities are and how to protect themselves, the better light workers we are because we're we're helping. People stay stay clear, and um, 
Do you have any questions? Yes, go ahead. Joan. So once um, a spirit is released from <clears throat> a person's uh, aura, is there a recovery period for that person? They, they go to the light, they, they go into... No, I'm not talking about the spirit. Oh, spirit. no, it's, no, the instant, it's I'm instantaneous. Talking about, I'm talking about the human being. Oh, no, they're, they, yeah, no. No, there's a lot of times, well, okay, so I, I was ta doing this class when we were over at the mansion, and I had about, what, 40 people in the class, and, and this guy had a particularly, um, he felt like he had the devil on his back. And so we did a lot of a lot of work with that, and I had my my back to the audience, and I you know, was working on him, working on him, and then the the devil left, and he his whole face changed. It was amazing. There was a period of time where I had people that were had pretty bad things, you know, and and it was just his face lightened up, and it was like whoa, there's, there's a whole new person there. And I turned around, and everybody that had been sitting in the ch in the chairs were up against the back wall. It's like, where'd everybody go? <laughs> yeah. and the energy was so strong, and I I didn't even notice it. And there was one person sitting in the sec that still sitting in the second row, going, "I'm holding the energy." <laughs> wow. But everybody else was. Remember the the room that was all glassed in, and yeah. where between the kitchen, and they were like plastered against the back <laughs> of the wall. It's like, well, come on in. Wow. He's okay now. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Joan, in answer to your question, the person who, when she re uh, sends somebody to the light, the person who had that entity, you can just see their whole body changes. They stand up straighter. They aren't coughing anymore. They're breathing better. There's all of these physical things besides the spiritual things. So you can actually see the difference. So you know, I, we should have before and after pictures. <laughs> before being <laughs> deep possessed and after. Well, yeah, I, it's really yeah, I've amazing. had people go every time I walk that they have a hallway, they have a light, uh, a mirror in their hallway, let's say, and they say, and every time I walk by that mirror and I look at myself, those are not the eyes. My eyes are now looking out at me. You know, that's there's somebody there. It's kind of scary. Sometimes I forget to be scared, and sometimes, and then I really look at it. I'm like, oh yeah, oh. And <laughs> I'm just so glad that there's somebody here that can that knows. See, you know, people say I, there's nobody I can talk to about this. Yeah. And so, what we're going to become is that safety zone for people to be able to talk about it and say, not only do I know about it, but I know how we can get rid of it. And it's a very safe, you know, process. You know. So, very nice, I think. Mm -hmm. So you're the one that can figure out that the other person has it, or does nope. the person nope. know it? Nope, 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 What nope. if you don't know? That's it, is that you get, there's the symptoms. Okay, so uh, is there something that you want to do that, that there's something in your mind that's telling you not to? Or is there a, a period of time, like if you were in a car accident, has, is there behavior change? Is there a time when when you can, because usually they come to me because there, there's some there's an issue that they feel stuck or that they feel they're depressed or they feel they they feel they feel different. And I said, well, when did that start? And, well, I had this car accident, and since that car accident, well, that's that's a perfect time when somebody could get could because your aura's down. Anytime your aura's down, just know that that's like a hundred percent chance that you're going to get something. You know, so if you if you and and sometimes they're, they're just like benign there and and but still you, they're they're zapping into your energy. I mean, even if they're not causing you problems, they're not supposed to be there. And plus, they're supposed to be growing. You know, as I was saying in, from the beginning, we're here to take our experiences back to the Godhead, to become uh, to become one with. You know, if you th if you think of of the creator or of um, our whoever created all this, all this energy, whoever's the main energy source, as an ocean, and you're a drop of water. When you go back, you become part of that ocean. You're not you're not an individual drop of water anymore. You're now the ocean. You are the creator. You are the energy that everybody depends on. So it's. 
you have you, you have to go back. You know, we can only evolve as as fast as the as the slowest person is going. And if you've got people that are like, I'm not going to go. You know, I like you know everything here, and it's like, no, you've got to go because you're we're all stuck here until you can go, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, do we need to do the specific technique to get to release the earthbound entity? Or no, do we no. Have to do like golden light or call in our guide. My my feeling is that come and train with me, and then do what feels good, feels right to you, what works for you. But get the get the basics down. You know what what the symptoms are. What um, because I. I you know, there are. This has been historically. Historically, we've had uh, demons in possession since written time. In front, I'm sure before then, you know, and every every religion has their form of um, demons that have to be removed out of people. And I mean, uh, bat, baptism is a is a form of spirit removal. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you have the. You have in Finland, you have the people that take the saunas and then they get beaten with uh, with branches or leaves or something, and they're beating out the devil. You know, the, the, then there's a uh, the Indian when you go in for sweat, sweat lodge. lodge. Thank you. Sweat lodge. <laughs> uh, sweat lodge. It's like I don't. Sounds like <laughs> <laughs> Indian. Indian. Something Indian. <laughs> Sweat lodge, yeah. So, so then, and, and that's a form to be, you know, to get rid of negativity and stuff. You know, you have people that are that are um, are chronically depressed. Now, it might be they really need drugs. You know, I'm I'm not, you know, I can't I can't determine that. But you you know when you feel better and you know when you feel worse. And so if if you come in and and if there's nothing there, then there's nothing there. But I bet you. That there's something there. I mean, we're we've been around too many things for too long not to have something. Okay, you were speaking of earthbound spirits being people, mm -hmm. and then demons. I mean, how do you uh, differentiate between the uh, the the, har the harm done? Or you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, I've worked with extraterrestrials, and I've worked with uh, spirits that have never been uh, incarnated. You know, with interdimensional beings. With thought forms, all kinds of things, and so some things are easier to work on. Some are like almost impossible, and and so it's it's just um, a trial and error kind of trial. And, is that it? Trial and error. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you you see what if you if you if it's not an earthbound entity. There, see, earthbound entities are the are the best to work with, are the easiest to work with because we all have something that we want. And so if you could say, oh, you want to drink? When you're over there, you can do it. Oh, you want to you want to have drugs? Well, you're not going to get it anymore here. You're going to go over there, and you can get it over there. And then you can have all you want, but not anywhere, not, not here anymore. But you know, you have these uh, thought forms that the, all they're all they're programmed to do is what they're told. I, I try to stay. Boy, I really got into the demons. That, that's not that common. You know, what what I what I would do is say, you know, I wouldn't work with those guys right away. And so the chances are that... Send them to Corky. Yeah, don't, yeah that, that takes yeah. A, yeah. Little, a little different stuff. <laughs> anyway, so it's, yeah. When, uh, in, as I mentioned the other night, in, when I was in Egypt, I picked up an earthbound entity. And when I got back, <clears throat> I was selling real estate then and in the car, a lot, all day, every day, you know, looking at houses, showing houses. And one of the, uh, things were not right, I was a little anxious, but one of the things that happened is I started not driving easily. Like, driving mm -hmm. became difficult and uh, sporadic. Mm -hmm. And I, just, I knew something was wrong. I didn't mm -hmm. know what was wrong, but I knew something was wrong. And then one day I looked in the mirror straight under my eyes and saw other eyes. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so if if you 
So I was in Egypt being spiritual and opening up totally, <laughs> which is probably how it happened. Probably. All right. So um, if you notice a, a change in your behavior, in some automatic thing, that was the signal for me. Right. And then the, the other thing you can do is look into your eyes. And if you see your own eyes coming back at you from the mirror, you're, you're probably okay. So what'd you do about it? Well, then I did not know, this is pre-Corky and pre dotty <laughs> but I did have a friend who knew how to release spirits. Great. And I contacted them and went through a session, very yeah. much like what you're talking about. All right. Yeah, and so as, as a hypnotherapist, I don't, I don't assume anything. I mean, I have, you know, I have my experiences, and I might say, hmm, this might be like that, but I don't assume anything. You know, it's your story, and I, I will ask you questions to see what's going on, but I'm not going to tell you what you have. You're going to tell me what you have, and that's where we work from. Ruth? Um, would you, when you mentioned about mental health and, and needing medications, so wouldn't you also say that sometimes these earthbound entities can actually make your mental health pro, uh, symptoms worse? So you have been, maybe you really do have major depression. Oh, sure. It's just your body chemistry or whatever. Yep. And then entity comes along and, hey, no, it's even worse. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all. But why isn't therapy working? Right. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I've worked with. We, I wanted to talk about remote. We've done. You are done. Your time is gone. Oh. <laughs> well. well I'm <laughs> okay. This was getting good. <laughs> Just a little bit. So that, this was a teaser. The class is next Saturday from ten to three <laughs> at UCM. the UCM. The all for ministerial uh, students. It's free. A part of your. And you've already other, paid for it. It's a gift for them from Corky. Uh, oh. Another tool for your toolbox. Wow. And for people who this is the first they've heard and uh, they just are interested, uh, you can get more information. Twenty-five bucks. It'll be twenty-five dollars. And just put if okay. you want to go, put your name on the card, the registration card, and put it in the the basket. And when you say next Saturday, are you talking about the Saturday that's coming up on the tenth? The tenth. Yes. Yeah. Now, if you can't make, if you, no, if you okay, because I'll, I'm, 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 I'm back, I'm, I'm back in the pool, so you know, it's, uh, I'm gonna start doing this stuff more. And, and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and are you going to be uh, filming it, or yeah? So uh, we could possibly zoom it if people are interested. Give, give Corky a call, uh, and. She's passing out the ha part of the handbook that you're going to be getting if you, any of you are interested. Uh, there we go. And oh, we're doing the basket. yes, we're going to do the basket. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> okay, this is a time that we t uh, uh, do a donation, and I want you to follow along with your program for the Sacrament of Giving. Giving to the ministry from which I receive my spiritual support and nurturing is an affirmation in consciousness of the truth that spirit is a prospering power enriching every area of my life. Thank you so much, Mary. Yes, and thank you. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Eileen, I'm always so delighted to see you here, and I don't know how much longer we have you for, so could you come up and do a closing prayer for us, please? Yay, I would be happy to. We love our Dr. Eileen. Yes, Dr. Eileen has another gig on Sunday. We're so glad when she makes it here. Yes, it's about a, a half an hour away, and their service is from 10 to 11. So it's, it's like, okay, yes, hi, grab a donut, we're off. <laughs> so um, it's so lovely to see everybody here and just catching the tail end of Corky's talk is always so cool. You know, yeah, even a little bit, there's gems and pearls that you find in it. And um, speaking, of, speaking of, uh, don't, why don't you mention we have coffee in the 
and, oh. and, and goodies. There is stuff. There is, and and the thing is, is that you know sometimes people, it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to take too much. I don't want to take just in case somebody else is going to take. And the thing is, when we think, well, I don't want to take so somebody else can have. At the end of the time, the food is all still there, so it's okay to go and to to take stuff and there's coffee in there and you know this is that time that you know everybody can sit down and kind of have a chat maybe you know pick Corky's brain a little bit more for specific questions or or you know catch up with one another so uh, please take full advantage of that but yes definitely we don't want things to go to waste so rather than say oh well somebody needs it more than me it's okay to say, you know what, I could really use this. Or even if you can't use it, maybe you know a neighbor who could use a dozen eggs. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you know somebody who really likes bell peppers or, or whatever. You know, just taking it doesn't mean necessarily that you have to use it, but that you know someone who can. And then that's that, that is that sacrament of giving. That is that creating that cycle of give and receive. Okay. So everyone take a nice deep breath in. Oh, I know it's been a heck of a week for so many. I keep hearing stories about all of the all of that which has been this week and yes. things that have gone awry. So as you as you breathe and just take that moment to breathe in and out. And even let yourself sigh. It's like okay. Dear blessed and wonderful creator, we thank you for this day and we thank you for our lives. We thank you for the blessing that is truly in each and every moment and in each and every breath. We thank you for the blessing of community. We thank you for the ways that help us gain tools in our toolkits to deal with all things from this realm and from others. We thank you for gaining in skills that allow us to be able to help humanity and to be that balancing, settling, soothing, loving force in the universe. Creator, we thank you for the fact that there is both light and shadow because without shadow, light does not have the same meaning. We thank you for giving us choice so that we can choose our path, the path that is truly right for us. We thank you for the practitioners and the people who go out and spend each and every day working to help others. And we ask you to bless them because sometimes their work is without thanks. We thank you and that includes our first responders, that includes our military, that includes the person putting your groceries in the bag at the grocery shop. Creator, we thank you for all of those who give of themselves in whatever way they give of themselves. And we also thank you for our ability to give. We thank you for blessing each and every one of us with a special gift. And as you made each one of us the only us in all the universe, that means that the gift you give us to share, no one else can share but us. We thank you for that opportunity. We thank you for all of those who are embracing moving forward and for all of those who are scared because that allows us to help share you and to help them find that light within themselves. Creator, we thank you for a beginning of summer. Ask blessings on all those who are graduating, who are getting married, who are moving, who are seeing change in their lives. And may they know that you're there with them the whole time, even during the scary parts. Thank you for everything, Creator, and we hope that you have an amazing day. For all your creation to the next seven generations and beyond. Aho Matako Yasin. Ago, ago, ago. By earth, sea, and sky. Namaste. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Blessed be and amen. Thank you so very much, Dr. Aini. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we've enjoyed having you here. If you want to ask Corky questions, she's going to be here for a while. Uh, uh, our a delightful Ed is going to have to leave quickly. And do you have anybody on Zoom that you wanted to say hello to? No. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.